Hi, everyone. Welcome to Foothill Country Day School's evening session. My name is Colette Sims. I'm the Director of Enrollment at Foothill Country Day School. We're so excited that you can be here today. It is Wednesday, March 2nd, and this is a very special session because we are meeting our third through fifth grade teachers. They all have been teaching a full day at Foothill and joined the Zoom this evening to tell you about the amazing things they're doing in the classroom. So we're so excited to have them here today and tell you all about the great things happening. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat box. I wanted to let you know we are coming up to the end of our evening panel series. So if you haven't had the opportunity to log on, we definitely recommend that you go to our YouTube page. You may be there right now and you'll see all of the other sessions that we've been offering. If you're interested in hearing the voices of our parents or our students or teachers from other grades, you can uh, click through and see those other sessions to, to access them. And if you're joining us live, we still have a couple sessions Next week, we have a meet the kindergarten through second grade teachers. That is again on Thursday at seven o'clock on the Zoom link. And the following week, we'll be offering a bilingual Spanish info session and an RSVP is required for that. So we hope to see you again soon. And we're excited that you're here tonight. And if you're watching us on YouTube, then we're excited for you to check out the other videos as well. So for this evening, I wanted to go over our session. Um, we are here today with our third through fifth grade teachers. And on the next slide, we're gonna hear from our lower school division director, Dr. Lisa Olsh. She oversees our kindergarten through fifth grade division. And we'll talk specifically about a few special aspects of our third through fifth grade program. After that, we're gonna hand it off to our teachers. We have two uh, uh, lead teachers in each grade who are gonna discuss what they teach and some of the great things happening in their classroom. And we'll end with a few of our specialists. We have a Dean of Students who's here as well as our literacy specialists. So they'll be talking to you as well about what they do on campus. And then we would love to hear from you. So please put your questions in the chat box. We'd love to answer them. And we're excited to hear what you have to say as well. And with that, I am going to hand the virtual microphone over to our Director of Lower School, Dr. Lisa Osh. Thank you, Ms. Sims. <clears throat> well, I'm so pleased that you're here with us this evening and we are excited to share with you these, um, these exciting years of, um, of lower school. We've watched students grow from K through two. Um, and by the time they reach these upper grades, um, they are ready to spread their wings, use the skills, the foundational skills that they learned as younger students, and really begin to, um, to dig into um, material. Uh, in terms of overview of the program, our grade levels, our classrooms are homeroom based. Um, that means that the students come into a homeroom, that homeroom is like their clubhouse. Those homeroom teachers are advisors, their parents, when you're not there, uh, they really work closely with the kids and take care of them, not just academically, but in terms of their social emotional life as well. In addition, in these three grades, we are departmentalized, which means one of the homeroom teachers teaches math and social studies history. The other teaches all of the language arts subjects. So it's a little bit different than it is in the lower grades where each of those classroom teachers teaches all of the subjects. Um, in addition to our uh, Homeroom subjects, the students go out for a, a wonderful assortment of specialist classes throughout the week. They have art, library, um, PE, music, science, Spanish, and technology. Um, and you'll hear from the teachers about some of those classes. I don't wanna take up too much time um, describing the program to you because really what brings the program alive are these wonderful teachers who are here with us tonight. In addition to the academic work that we do at school, there are some wonderful opportunities that open up for students in the upper grades. We have a student council in lower school that's uh, composed of third through fifth grade students. We have um, opportunities for our students to be ambassadors um, for the admissions office and to greet visitors as they come into the classroom to see us. Um, in addition, there are wonderful field trips and there are longer class trips in the upper two grades the teachers will describe to you. So 
without further ado, um, I do want to, um, to pass the baton back to Ms. Sims to introduce our wonderful um, homeroom teachers in our upper grades um, so they can share with you uh, in detail each of their um, uh, subject areas. Great, thank you, Dr. Olsh. And so the first grade in third through fifth would be third grade. And so I would like to invite our teacher, Mrs. Chan, to come and speak about her class. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon Chan. Um, I've been teaching at Foothill in third grade for over 10 years now, and I really just love the grade and love the program that we have. Um, I am the math and social studies slash history teachers in third grade. And you can see here some of the activities that we've been doing just this year alone. Um, we do believe in taking a lot of field trips because we believe, um, especially for social studies related, that it's so important to get the students out there, to see the world, to get that hands-on exp experiential learning. In math, we really have a, um, we use a Singapore math-based program, and we do a lot, especially in third grade, we are focused a lot on developing their number sense. So we do a lot of work with place value and with regrouping, and so that we develop that comfort um, and that familiarity with manipulating numbers so that students are able to use that from those foundational skills for more complex um, problem solving when they get up to fourth and fifth grade. Recently, we're very excited because in third grade, we have started our workshop model of learning and math, and it has been wonderful. The kids are excited about it every single day. And so for most of the math classes, they get to rotate through four different stations and just an opportunity for them to apply the math skills and concepts that they have learned in our whole group lessons to different activities. And you can see in one of the pictures, those are one of our most recent field trips um, in social studies for third grade, we are really focused on learning about the local history. California is so rich in its history and there's so much history in California alone. So in third grade, we really focus on learning about the local community and including, for example, the first peoples in California as well as develop, delving into the different types of communities and groups of people that we have living in California that really made California's history and California the um, just the diverse state that it, it really is. Thank you so much for sharing that. And now we'll go to Mrs. Naziri. I'm still muted. There we go. Okay. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Naziri. Um, I am the third grade reading and writing teacher. This is my first year at Foothill. It's my 25th year teaching, and I love teaching third grade. It's just such a fun age, and the kids really, everything is curiosity for them. Um, a few things that we firmly believe in are making as many experiential hands-on learning opportunities for our kids as we are able to. One way we do that, especially with our literature, is that we've partnered with fifth grade, and you can see in one of the photos um, that we have reading buddies we meet with once a month, and it gives both the fifth graders and the third graders an opportunity. We take turns each month, um, one grade will read to the other, and it strengthens the bond between the students at multiple grade levels, but it also gives the kids a chance to really shine in something that they enjoy doing. Um, we do a lot of games, learning games in the classroom as well, as you can see in one of the lower picture. Um, this was one of our meeting times where we were kind of reenacting a game from one of the books that we were reading um, last month. We just finished and we've started now this month because of Winn-Dixie. Um, one thing you don't see in the photos is that our entire classroom transforms dependent on the book that we're reading. So last month when we were reading um, the Adventures of a South Pole Pig, the students all had their own big box, moving box, essentially. And the box became a boat while we were traveling along with the protagonist in her boat. And then it became um, an igloo when she got to the South Pole. And then every student's box became a dog sled when the pig attempted to become a, a dog. And um, so all of these experiences really just enrich what the students take away from their learning. In writing, we use Writer's Workshop, and we focus very 
concentratedly on making sure that the students are writing at a level that is appropriate for them, but that we are challenging them and strengthening their skills. We've just, we're finishing up our opinion writing unit and some of the work that these kids are doing is well beyond third grade. They can out argue and out debate, um, you know, my, me and I've got four kids and I, I'm pretty good at arguing and debating, um, but the skills that they're learning are so great. It's such a, a wonderful foundation for them because it's going to take them on, not just through the rest of elementary school, what they're learning, not just through high school. These are foundational skills that they are learning that they will take with them through college and beyond. Wow, I would love to come and see some of those students out debating each other in third grade. Thank you so much for sharing. And so with that, we're going to transition to our fourth grade homeroom teachers, and I will hand the virtual mic over to Mrs. Coyman. Hi, I'm Sarah Coyman. This is my sixth year teaching fourth grade language arts at Foothill. Um, I love it. It's just, it's my happy place or my home away from home. And then you can see as we all gather in pretty much all of these pictures. We like to be um, close up together. We like to be engaged and involved in whatever it is we're working on. Uh, we just finished our fourth novel just today. Um, similar to the picture on the left there reading the novel before, Gregor the Overlander um, was an amazing book and the kids were really into it and they thought they wouldn't get over it, but we just finished novel number four and then they didn't want that one to end. Uh, so reading is really, really big in fourth grade. We do readers workshop but also we have class novels that we do and we um, learn all sorts of reading strategies using our class novels. Uh, I also teach spelling, vocabulary, grammar, and writer's workshop, similar to what Mrs. Naziri was saying. Uh, these guys are also excellent debaters. Uh, we just finished, we're finishing our opinion unit as well, kind of uh, focused on persuasive writing right now. And they're gonna get ready to present these persuasive arguments next week. And I think, a lot of them are very hopeful that they're going to convince me of many different things of why candy should be allowed, why we need a class pet, um, why they need extra recess, all kinds of things. They are researching, they are <laughs> citing their sources, they're, they've got all kinds of things ready to go next week when they present their talks. Um, we love to use technology in the classroom. Down on the bottom right, we are actually doing um, some passion projects. So Fridays are kind of reserved for our genius hour or passion projects where the kids can research things that they're interested in, that they want to learn more about. And then they teach the rest of the class or present to the rest of the class about it. It's not really part of um, any of the curriculum. It's just kind of our own Friday thing that still incorporates language arts. Uh, and then the, the top picture there is just sharing their writing because that's what, like what they're gonna do next week. It's just really important that the kids see that there's an audience for their writing at the writing has a purpose. Um, I have two students that attend Foothill. They've been there. My daughter's graduating eighth grade this year. She's been there since third grade and just it's a wonderful place to be. I love it. So hope to see you there. Thank you so much. And our next fourth grade homeroom teacher, Mr. Seen. Grade, uh, social studies, history, geography, and mathematics. Uh, the person speaking before me, Mrs. Corman, is uh, our teaching partner. And I have the distinct privilege of uh, this being my 12th year, all in fourth grade here at Foothill. Uh, it is just the ball. Every day is a new adventure, something fun. I think the joys of fourth grade at this age is uh, I, as an educator, are, I am learning just as much from them as I hope to impart in terms of my teaching um, the other direction to give them knowledge. One of my favorite things uh, is teaching history, and we have the wonderful luxury of having a wonderful program to which we then eventually uh, get to uh, do a lot of hands-on experiences, field trips. So we focus on California history and the geography. And then also, we also focus a lot about uh, the culture. 
uh, how California became a state and the wonderful contributions, the impacts of those that came before us, and especially our local indigenous population, which has been really wonderful for our kids to learn. And it culminates in history with a one day trip uh, to Sacramento, as Dr. Olsh had mentioned. We go visit Gold Rush sites, uh, we spend a day together, and the kids get to see all their hard work and what they've been learning uh, leading up to that point. I also uh, teach math. And the fun thing about math is uh, it is a continuation of the hard work that the teachers before me have put in. And I take the foundational uh, math that they've learned and we begin to apply them in terms of uh, the four major uh, foundational skills of uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then we apply them to even bigger things, fractions, decimals, percentages, and what's really fun about that is the kids aren't learning just one way how to solve problems. They are learning how to solve problems two, three, four, five ways, which gives them a variety of options because I think our kids these days are learning in different ways that we didn't learn as adults. So to have that freedom in class, uh, for me to be able to teach them and then them be able to choose their favorite uh, modality of uh, learning for all the wonderful things that are going in class is a joy. Uh, and as you can see here in the pictures, uh, you know, we've uh, the, the students there in yellow, uh, we did a uh, California kind of uh, walk through where we walk through all the major points of California history. The bottom part, we uh, visited a uh, our uh, local mission. But what's really cool about that is uh, the field trip that day was really focused on the impacts of the mission on the local indigenous population. It was a completely different point of view. And I really enjoyed uh, listening to the kids share what they knew and to be able to see it from a different perspective uh, in terms of history and having everything uh, come alive. And then lastly, the other thing I really get to do and I'm really proud of because I saw it in the previous slide is I'm the lower school uh, student council rep. And one of the things that we've really worked hard on this year at this uh, age for our third, fourth and fifth graders is giving them an opportunity to have leadership, uh, learning leadership skills that they can then uh, apply to uh, not just in their classrooms, but through all of uh, lower school K through five. Really look forward to hopefully seeing you on campus. It's a really fun place and it's awesome to come to work every day. Great, thank you so much. And now we're on to fifth grade, which is the oldest grade in our lower school division. And so I'd like to, hand the mic to Mr. Gately. Hi there, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Frank Gately, I'm completing my 11th year at Foothill. I taught fourth and fifth grade my first couple of years. And when I've been teaching uh, fifth grade for most of the time, mm -hmm. um, it's just fifth grade. I teach math and social studies. And, you know, I was, I was just thinking um, that this, something really unique about Foothill is it's it's really cool to be a good student. It's really cool to be intellectually curious and to just be a unique, sometimes quirky kid who just thinks outside the box. We have lots of kids like that. And our kids are very friendly. I just uh, thinking about some of the transitions that have happened this year with fifth grade. And some of the students as I'm looking at that long picture on the bottom and how Mrs. Smith and I are so proud of our students and for those kids finding their place and finding their voice and being a part of the school and just being uh, comfortable and welcomed. Um, so, you know, from our community talks, you know, this is something I hope that as Mr. Seen mentioned, I hope all of you get to uh, join us on campus because something we see so often is the kids get lots of opportunities to speak in public. It's just part of the school culture. And that's a nice thing every year starting in fourth grade all the way up, they do a community talk. So as you see in the pictures here, that long one on the bottom, we always like to do a traditional, take a traditional picture of the very first few days of school, and then we try to do one later because it's pretty amazing how much they've grown. And you can see it from the lines there. Uh, in the top left picture, that's where I was teaching uh, math, we were learning, I believe, the area of a triangle. 
So area equals half the base times the height. And so we start getting into some pre-algebra, some, uh, some geometry, how to manipulate variables, how to use inverse operations, um, all of those things. Just do, we do quite a bit with that. And uh, it's a highly interactive math class. And uh, the students, I, I hear every year how they, wow, I really love this. I get it. I get it. And that's just music to any teacher's ear. And over on the top right was a, um, a field trip that had been in the incubation stage before we were we went into quarantine and were finally able to do it. And we had a, a behind the scenes tour of uh, JPL in Pasadena. And so we got to go on the Mars simulation yard. We were able to see the robotics assembly facility and just so many other things. It was kind of almost overwhelming. It was so cool, but a really great trip. And so that was that was a field trip there. And you know, one of the things I cover in United States history in fifth grade is the age of exploration. And the age of exploration is uh, you know, change the world. Um lots of challenges happen, but so many great things. And it's just a nice tie-in because the age of exploration is sort of continuing in places like JPL. So the students really connected with that. And I think we have several in that class in, in our fifth grade who definitely want to be who want to work at JPL and one wants she really wants to be an astronaut uh, I have a son going to Foothill he's gone there since seedling he wasn't there for a year or so but and he is um graduating eighth grade this year and um yeah Mrs. Smith and I are also starting a special a project uh, it'll be a, a new project for fifth grade it's a living wax museum so the students have chosen a person of influence and they're doing a research project. We do full Cornell notes. The kids start doing Cornell notes the first week of school um, in my class. And this is a skill they've been using here. They're going to utilize in, in um, language arts quite a bit for this. So Cornell notes, research, they will do an, uh, they will do a performance piece. They'll do an art piece. It's sort of a cross-curricular thing that Mrs. Smith and I are working on at the moment. And I think I can have Mrs. Smith take over from here. Wow, thank you so much. That was the perfect lead in to your teaching partner. And so <laughs> I'll hand it over to our other fifth grade homeroom teacher, Mrs. Smith. Thank you and thank you, Mr. Gately. Welcome to all of you. We're glad that you're here. And um, I'm so delighted to um, be able to share about fifth grade with you. My name is Mrs. Jennifer Smith, and uh, this is my seventh year at Foothill. Uh, I've previously taught third grade, and I'm loving being in fifth grade. Um, so many wonderful developmental changes in a fifth grader. Um, so much critical thinking is developing. We really try to um, provide that place for them to develop their independence and their identity and to feel comfortable to try out new things. Um, we want to be able to come alongside them and help them, um, you know, think about how to think that metacognition and so whether that's through morning meetings where we gather as a class and have a question that we can talk about or just um, a student saying you know i'd love to talk to you about this question um, all these wonderful faculty that you've heard from we, we are here to let our students know that we are rooting for them we're cheering for them and we're here to support them so fifth grade um, is a wonderful, wonderful year of development, as I've said. And uh, I teach reading and writing workshop, like my partners in third and fourth grade, Mrs. Naziri, Mrs. Koyman. And uh, then that's also supported by um, grammar and vocabulary and spelling. And in the reading curriculum, our reading workshop, um, we are really fortunate to have this curriculum because we're encouraging our students to make the choice of which book they would like to read. And so we offer a lot of different books that they can choose from. We teach them how to choose the kind of book they need to read. Um, but we want to offer them books where they see themselves. And we, we really strive to be that type of learning environment where students have those resources and they recognize themselves. And by choosing books, that's one way to encourage them. 
On top of the reading workshop, we also, as you heard from my other two language arts partners, um, will choose individual novels to study. And that gives them some more of the traditional types of learning about literature, for instance, providing text evidence um, for your answer. So we're trying to give them a very rich literature based program. Um, you've heard all the wonderful things that go on in writing workshop and in fifth grade, we too are finishing our opinion unit with some persuasive topics. Um, really exciting. One group has chosen should students sit in with their parents at parent conferences and they've done polls of each other um, to put into charts and graphs and they're just loving this opportunity to be able to um, present their side of the question and we're challenging them to even present the other side that they don't necessarily agree with. So really pushing that critical thinking. Um, you'll see from these uh, pictures here, um, on the left, this was a recent book report that we um, asked the students to do in conjunction with their nonfiction reading and writing um, to kind of apply it in a real world setting, except this is a, a Google Doc that looks like a Facebook kind of page. And uh, so they each chose a famous African American and um, researched what the great influence that these people, particularly like someone like Misty Copeland, um, has had on the world of ballet. And their choices ran the gamut. It was so impressive to see who they wanted to research and to learn about and um, to really delve into the um, characteristics and the character of um, famous African-Americans. And so it was just a delight to read these. The bottom right-hand picture, um, this class that Mr. Gately and I are fortunate to teach and, and the teachers before us as well um, are very creative, very artistic. And so this was just a quick, um, art lesson that Mr. Gately shared with them and they made some holiday cards for the respective traditions and cultures and they were so proud to show them so we wanted to make sure that we were able to show the snapshot and up in the right hand corner not only do we have those types of field trips where we go out into the field um, we're still carrying on with a, a few short virtual field trips and this is one where we had all the fifth graders packed into one room watching on zoom we did a virtual field trip Trip with the Huntington Library and Gardens in Pasadena and it was on the topic of researching using primary sources which as Mr. Yately said with our cross-cultural and cross-curricular um, project that we're doing right now this is was the kickoff to helping them know how to choose sources and then read them and understand them and include them in their research projects so it was really fun some of the artifacts we got to learn about from the collection and then lastly, I also wanted to add on, um, in addition to that great JPL trip that we had, we are looking forward to a um, multi-day uh, trip that we call Astro Camp, and that is a fifth grade annual tradition. And we uh, go over to Idlewild and the children, the students learn um, just how capable they are. And it's amazing to see them learn not only about scientific concepts, but about themselves and what they are capable of doing and the bond that is really for, forged between these students as they encourage each other to explore all of their capabilities. So as you can tell, fifth grade, we're thrilled about um, everything that they're learning and the experiences that we know are gonna contribute to their futures. So thanks for being here and we're hoping to see you around soon. Great, thank you so much. Um, I don't know about the audience, but I'm ready to join third, fourth, and fifth grade tomorrow because you all just described such amazing things happening in your classrooms. And with that, um, one thing that Mrs. Smith mentioned was uh, resources and support. So we do have additional, uh, a few additional support people in the lower school division that I'd like to have speak about their roles and the way they support students and families. And so with that, I'd like to ha invite Mrs. Opal to speak for a few minutes. She is our lower school Dean and math specialist. Thank you, Ms. Sims, and thank you all for being here. Yes, I have um, two 
roles kind of um, rolled into one at Foothill. Um, the first one is the lower school dean. And as I explain it to our students, um, I'm a helper. And, um, and the second part of my title is dean of students. So I'm a student helper. And so I deal with a lot of um, <clears throat> student learning support. So any when we have students who are um, who might have neurodiverse learning needs, I make sure that those students are being supported in a way that um, that works for them and their learning style. And I also get the privilege of dealing with behavior and discipline issues as those arise. And um, as math coordinator, I um, have I love pulling small groups of students. That's one piece of my role is I pull students who might need more of a, cha a challenge or a little bit of additional support. Um, and we work in small groups. I have a time set aside for each class once a week. Um, and you can see here, this looks like this is a fourth grade group. Um, and so I pull them and we kind of work collaboratively on refining some of their skills or challenging skills that they already have. Um, I also work behind the scenes with the teachers um, in terms of supporting them with math instruction and math and pacing and um, how their curriculum is going and brainstorming ideas on how we can better and more effectively target and support all of our learners. So that's my role in a nutshell. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And in the lower school, we also have a literacy specialist. And so I'd like Mrs. House to um, be able to speak about what she does in the lower school with our students. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, continuing to be on with us. It's been such a pleasure um, for me to hear everybody. And um, as you can tell, we have an amazing third through fifth grade team, including Ms. Opal, and I'm so privileged to work with everybody. Um, let me explain a little bit about my role as literacy specialist. I um, enjoy so much, and I tell the kids this, um, getting to know each and every child um, throughout the lower school as a reader, and um, then communicating with the homeroom teachers and um, ensuring basically their progress um, to proficiency before um, fifth grade and before upper school. So um, third through fifth grade, as you've heard, is an amazing time developmentally for um, these kiddos. Um, just to give you a sneak peek at what I've been doing, um, for example, um, I also run the reading support program. So I do run small groups a lot like Miss Opal. Um, my classroom, if you will, office is right off the front office. So you're always welcome to come by and take a peek. Um, but in third grade with small groups, uh, kiddos are learning and continuing to learn um, both the skills of fluent, accurate reading and also reading to learn. So it's a wonderful time in small group to work on, for example, advanced phonics skills and really hone in on that fluency and decoding uh, while also enjoying the huge range of literature available to them and um, ensuring that they are exposed and really digging in and loving literature um, as an extension of what they're doing in Mrs. Naziri's class. Um, in fourth grade, as uh, the content gets deeper and more intense, uh, we want to intensify um, and work with our students to ensure that they are keeping up with the, the depth and complexity um, using critical thinking skills and analysis of text. And uh, continuing, continuing basically into fifth grade, um, I've been working with uh, students this week in small group as they're reading their class novel, oftentimes on things like nuances in text and really being explicit to stop and ask questions about um, characters, emotions and vocabulary to make sure that at every step as we're reading, we're really understanding. And um, so I, I really hope and believe, and I've seen that um, children uh, just grow and flower throughout these third to through fifth grade years. And um, a part of it is of course, because of the wonderful staff that we have at Foothill and also the language arts curriculum, which I must say is very strong. We have a unified curriculum that is sequential. And I would say offers a huge variety of choice um, to each and every student. And because of that, 
Every student at Foothill often can find a challenge in their own right, um, in the books that they choose and the path that they take in class projects and whatnot. So I feel like we're really supporting our students very adequately here at uh, Foothill for these important years before we send them off to upper school. And just a little bit about me, I've also been around Foothill um, a number of years. This is my fourth year as a reading specialist, but I currently have two uh, Foothill Falcons um, in uh, the school and one child who graduated. So I'm also a proud mom and have to say it's a wonderful place. So welcome. Thank you so much. Um, and I thought that Miss House brought up a great point that if you are interested in stopping by any of our teachers classrooms, you are welcome to. We prioritize individual weekday tours so that you can come see campus in action and see the learning happening. Um, so with this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, we welcome questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to Fight and Henry to join me on Zoom and see if anyone has any questions, they're welcome to put them in the chat box. Also, uh, if you think of something afterwards, you are welcome to email us and I'm happy to connect you with Dr. Olsh or with any of the teachers on this call. But like I said, we have time just for a couple questions. And so, Anne, do you have any that have come up? I do. I have several actually. So we'll try and be um, succinct, everybody, um, because we want to get to all the ones that people wanted. Um, the very first one is uh, uh, about our uh, what we call specialist classes. The question is, how often do they have the other classes like Spanish or science or PE? Um, and I know that varies from grade to grade. So maybe Dr. Olsh could answer that to, to give them a, a vibe of how long, how many times a week they get those classes. I'll take I'll take a stab at this. Um, it does vary grade to grade, um, but what I can uh, say in general is that as the kids grow older, they have um, more classes um, in each of the, the specialist areas. We are always trying to balance um, time with the homeroom subjects and those fundamental skills that we're trying to get kids really, really strong in with um, the enrichment of uh, subjects in other fields. So it's um, it, it's. There are more classes generally in fifth grade in the specialist areas than there are in third grade than there are in say the younger K through two grades. And we can, you know, on a one to one basis, happy to elaborate on that a bit more. Okay, great. Um, the next question is, is it true that Foothill does not have homework? And at what grades does that change? And how do kids learn to organize themselves if they don't have homework? Who wants to take that question? <laughs> I'll take that one. Right. <laughs> well, it's funny because I mentioned that we were doing working on persuasive writing in class, but I also assigned for homework um, a paragraph for the week that was titled, Do You Think That Homework Should Be Banned? And I've, you know, that the paragraph's not due until tomorrow, but I've already taken a sneak peek at some of their responses. And it's actually pretty split of kids that think it should be banned and things that kids that think that should be there. Um, because and the reasons were that you know otherwise you're bored your parents will say you don't have anything to do your parents will make you do other things you don't want to do um, it's just funny to read their responses so we do have homework beginning in fourth grade um, but and and I know Mr. Seen my teaching partner would agree and I think even the fifth grade teachers would agree a lot of it is um, just a continuation of what we're doing in class it's not just assigned uh, busy work <laughs> you know random random busy work it's always connected to something we're doing and a lot of times they can finish it in class. And if it's brought home for homework, it might be due to maybe not being fully attentive about it in class. And we also have study hall periods that, two study hall periods a week, and our fourth graders are able to work on homework then and go back and forth between my room and Mr. Seen's room, depending on whether they have questions about language arts or math and history. So we do have it. It's not an excessive amount and it's not a busy work kind of homework. Great. I Great. also think too. Uh, oh, God, Mr. Gately. Well, I would just say that, you know, there um, there's quite a bit of work to do during class, and if our students are efficient and utilizing the time they have with us at school, they often don't have a whole lot of homework at home. However, 
if they don't utilize that time very well during school, then say, oh, I had two hours of homework last night. I said, but remember when you were in class and you had the time to do this and I was here to help you or Mrs. Smith, they go, oh yeah. But, but also um, having a son who's gone on to sixth, seventh and eighth grade, the workload from a parent's perspective does ramp up, but it ramps up appropriately because we're getting the students ready for the next step in their educational um, journey. And it's, uh, I've been at Foothill long enough to know that when students come back and visit us after leaving eighth grade, they very often are so appreciative of how well prepared they were at Foothill. Right. I, I think too that that's a very focused area um, to answer the last part of that question, Mrs. Henry, is that uh, time management and in, uh, learning how to be independent, uh, those all get wrapped in very uh, uh, focused wise in third grade, fourth and fifth. So we are teaching these skills so the kids can uh, manage their time. And so they have less homework and the ultimate part of that, which I'm really appreciative of as a parent of a Foothill kid too, is that if they finish everything they need to finish, they get to spend that quality time at home, family time, uh, time to do those extracurricular activities that enrich a kid that is equally as important as homework. So it's a proper balance, which I think we work really hard. And I um, don't want to, you know, toot our horn too much, but I think we do a pretty good job at it. Great. Okay. Kind of related to supporting kids. I, I know what the answer to this is, but I think I'm going to call on Mr. Silva for this one. Um, the question is when a child joins in the middle grades, how do we make sure that they um, are making friends, not being bullied, having a community? How are we making sure that they're okay? Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And teachers, you're just doing a fantastic job as always. It's just, I'm just so proud uh, to, to work with you every day. And uh, well, one of the ways is, is that uh, these students get to come into these teachers' classes every day and they're welcomed by them warmly. Uh, you, you saw slides of the classrooms. You heard teachers just give very brief presentations about what they're doing, how they're engaging students, how they're getting to know their students, understand who their students are as people. And uh, also, uh, just in terms of curriculum and program, we're a responsive classroom school. And if you're not familiar with responsive classroom, I encourage you to Google it. And uh, it's a curriculum that uh, we use as, uh, as a guide to creating a, a classroom, as the name implies, that uh, really seeks to engage all students and help all students feel a sense of connection and, and really belonging in a classroom environment and in the larger social environment of the school. Uh, you know, because we're a relatively small school uh, and because our teachers are who they are as educators and professionals, and I mentioned they really do seek to get to know each and every child, if there are things that are happening in the child's life at school that, or even outside of school uh, that uh, come to school, if you will, uh, and, uh, you know, our, our teachers are on it very quickly. Uh, Mrs. Opal's on this call as our dean of students. Dr. Olaf is our lower school director. They work very closely with the teachers. Uh, in weekly meetings. Sometimes those uh, meetings take place more than once a week. And the focus of, the, of those meetings is the student experience and, and as necessary, the individual student experience. And so if things aren't going as well as they should be, or we think they should be with students socially, or as you said, Mrs. Henry, if a student is in fact um, uh, just uh, uh, on the receiving end of, of unkind behavior uh, from other students, uh, we, 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 we get on it very quickly. Uh, we aren't as quick to label, uh, uh, you know, typical behavior among third, fourth, and fifth graders as bullying behavior. We know what bullying behavior is. We know what harassing behavior is, and we're quick to identify that and call it out if that's what it is and, and deal with it appropriately. Thankfully, at a school like Foothill, the uh, power of the culture, really, uh, a culture of kindness and understanding and really expect expectation uh, that you're going to treat others as you wish to be treated that's so pervasive uh, throughout these teachers' classrooms, throughout all of our classrooms, that uh, that, that goes a long way in um, helping us ensure, one, that families understand uh, how they're gonna be held accountable, their students are gonna be held accountable for their behavior, but also to encourage students to uh, behave uh, and engage with one another uh, as, again, as they would expect to uh, uh, be treated. 
Great. Okay, we have one last yeah. question in the chat box. And I think we'll start with um, Ms. Naziri because I know she most recently taught at another school. So the question is for any teachers who have taught at other schools, what do you like most about teaching at Foothill? And what do you feel from your perspective as an educator separates Foothill from the other schools you taught? I have the benefit of um, having taught, I've kind of taught everywhere. I've taught in public and private and charter and homeschool. And I, I've seen and done most of it. And I have to say that it's not just lip service, what you are told when you come in through a tour at Foothill. When it's expressed to you as a parent that we meet your child where they are, we do. And I think that is that for me, the largest thing that sets Foothill apart. My two daughters are attending Foothill and they are challenged and they are pushed and they are stretched. And it's because they are being met academically where they are. But I also see the other side of it with those students who do need the additional support and they need holes filled in. And there is never a moment where any of us are told, just drag the kids along. It's every child can and should succeed in a way that they are able to. And so for me, that's what sets Foothill apart. I, as a teacher, love the culture on our campus. The students are welcoming and kind and excited to be there. And they can't wait for you to open the door every single morning. I never see a third grader come in dragging their feet, kicking and screaming. They don't want to be there. Our students are excited to be on campus because even if they're not excited to do essay writing, they know that it's going to be fun. And even if they're not excited to read the novel we're reading as a class, they know that they've got science that day and that's the highlight for them or they have an art class. So the, the feeling, and it, it felt, when I first came on campus, I, I will tell you, it felt weird. It felt a little strange um, because everyone was so nice. But when you're there and you're in it, it's just this genuine warmth that comes from the teachers and the staff and the support staff and the kids radiate it. And so I know that sounds really hokey, but um, I, I hope that answers the question. Um, my, my perspective as both a teacher and a parent at Foothill. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sims, you wanna take over? Yeah, and I would just like to say too, all of our teachers come from extensive teaching backgrounds. So if you're interested in talking to any grade about their experience prior to Foothill and during their time here, um, the average tenure, you know, of our teaching staff at Foothill is, is between seven to, to 15 years. So we welcome you to come to campus to talk to our teachers and talk to our camp, talk to our students. I just want to say a big thank you to the parents who are logging on at seven o'clock or checking us out on YouTube and watching this video. A big thank you to these teachers here today who've been teaching all day and have come on to tell you more about our program. And so if you're interested, I welcome you to come schedule a tour or you can apply online today. And we look forward to getting to know your family better in the near future. Take care and wishing everyone a great night.